In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today, in the Armenian Church, we celebrate uh, one of our major five feast days, uh, Transfiguration, Ayla Gerbutyun, or Baidara Gerbutyun, another word for Transfiguration. Uh, Ayla Gerbutyun comes from the concept that um, Jesus became something other, Ailabes, like other than what he was. Baidar ager butyun, Baidar means um, brilliant, bright, um, radiant. Um, so this is what we celebrate today. The radiance, the brilliance, um, the changing of Jesus Christ before his apostles. And exactly what was that change, and what does that mean for us today? So, in the Transfiguration Gospel reading that we read today, there's actually uh, many important happenings that took place. Before Jesus went up to the mountain, uh, when he took his apostles, um, a few chosen ones, and, and he changed his appearance before them, um, he, first, he asked his disciples, um, who do people say that I am? And um, so some say that you're the prophet, you're Elijah. Uh, and then, then Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? Directly to his apostles. And uh, Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. A savanons isk tuk inch gesek oven, Simon Bedros Padas Hanet, Tun Christosenes, Abro Astuzo Vortin. You are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. And then shortly after that, after that verbal revelation of who Jesus was as the Messiah and the Son of the Living God. Jesus tells his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple, whoever wants to follow me, must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. So this is the second part now of this entire transfiguration story. First, Jesus asks, who do you say that I am? And they say, you are the Lord, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Then he says, if you want to follow me, you have to take up your cross. You have to take up the cross and follow me. Then, six days later is when this transfiguration takes place. Right after the fact that Jesus said, you have to take up your cross and follow me, he says six days later. Um, and then this is where the transfiguration takes place. Vetor yet Jesus arav iren het bedrosa hagoposan u anor yechpaira Hovanessa, Hanet Zano, parts of Lerma, Arantin, Yev Ayla Gerbatsav, Anons Archev, Ir Yesa Pilatsav, Arevi Bes, U Ir Hantets Nera, Germag Yevan Lucy Bes. So they went up to the mountain, and um, in front of them, this transformation takes place. This transfiguration takes place. And I, I love the description that is used. Ayla um, Gerbatsav, he became something different. He became something other, right in front of them. And his face um, glowed, Pilatsav. Um, like the sun, Arevi um, Bes. You know, 
they always say that you shouldn't look directly into the sun, right? If you look into the, if you direct, look directly into the sun, what happens to your eyes? Yeah, yeah it, it could damage them, or, or or it'll be painful, or you'll be. Um, and we've all done this. You look up in the sky, you see the sun, and then you look away, and everything is all like fuzzy and shady and white and bright, and you can't really see. Even though you're looking bright, you're looking right away, like you, your vision is there, but it's changed. This is what happened to the disciples. Um, so there was a glowing of Jesus from his face, and he changed before them, and he became white as the sun, as bright as the sun. And you know, it's amazing that, you know, the, they didn't know what was going on. You know, they thought, they, they saw Elijah there. They saw Moses there. Uh, the two greatest prophets of the Old Testament. Um, they were there right next to Jesus. They were on the top of this mountain. They were alone. Um, the air was probably uh, thin when you go up to the top of the mountain experience, right? Uh, they were hiking. They were exhausted. And then all of a sudden, this, maybe even say this crazy thing takes place that they didn't expect. And they were speechless. Um, and then Simon Peter says, let's build some tabernacles so that you can stay here. But that wasn't part of what's meant for the experience. The experience was that they were to the see, they were to see the face of the glory of Jesus, to see the glory of Jesus Christ that had never been shown fully to the disciples prior to that, and really would not be seen again for any of us until his second coming, when he comes with that same glory. Uh, it is the light that we refer to so often in the gospel. And in the epistle reading from the first letter of John, which mimics the gospel of John, the first chapter, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And it continues to say that it was the light of the world that came to enlighten the world, and that the darkness could not overcome it. The darkness could not comprehend it. It was un, un understandable to darkness, that glorious light of Jesus. So then the end of this story is that, um, you know, they're knocked off their feet. Uh, they've fallen down with this incredible experience of seeing the glory of God. And then Jesus touches them and lifts them up and then it's like they're shaken out of this um, stupor that they were put in. And Jesus says, it's I. Don't be afraid. Let's go. So all of this connects uh, to this incredible transfiguration experience that we too are called to have and to experience. But we have to follow each of these steps in a way. Jesus asks each of us, who do you say that I am? Who do we think Jesus is? Um, who is he in our lives? Is he the Messiah? Is he the son of the living God? If we can express that, if we could believe that, if we can experience that, if we know that, and, and we do, there is opportunity then for transfiguration to take place in our lives. There are then opportunities for us to see some of Jesus' glory. It, it may not be exactly the same exact way that um, the disciples experienced on that mountaintop. But I'll, I'll tell you that there's one very common experience that people have when they've been close to death and then they come back. What is the most common uh, experience?
experience, the common denominator with all these people, what do they see? They see light. They see a bright light, right? Um, I believe that's the glory of, of God. Uh, that's what, as believers, we will see that. And perhaps some of those people have come back. Uh, many of them have come back changed people. They've come back with incredible faith, incredible belief in our loving and living God. We don't have to have just a near near death experience to experience that glory. Uh, you know, right now in our community, we're reading a book called "Breakfast on the Beach: Font, Meeting God at the Water's Edge," and um, it's a, it's been a wonderful experience. We have over 20 people that are a part of our group, and so far in the, in the three chapters, it's all about Jesus's appearance at the edge of uh, the ocean and the shore when he appeared in his post-resurrection appearance to his apostles. Um, and that was a mini type of glorious experience that they had. Anytime we meet our God, it's a little glimpse of that glory. And the book itself talks about not just the ocean, but we know the ocean to be such a powerful force, um, an incredible sight for those who have seen um, either the sunrise um, on just pop up over the, the horizon of the ocean. Um, what's one of the most common phrases that we use when we say that? What does it do to us? Something with our breath. Takes our breath away, right? It's breathtaking. Um, how do you say breathtaking in Armenian? Shunchkanat or something? Breathtaking, taking it? Or, yeah. or like breath. losing your breath almost. Shunchahar. Shunchahar. Okay. It's like, it's like you have, it's amazing. You look at it and it's, wow. You know, your breath almost stops, right? We've all seen those experiences. It doesn't have to be at the ocean. Sometimes it's a sunrise. Sometimes it's a sunset. Um, sometimes it's just uh, an incredible experience that we've had, a human interaction. Um, these are opportunities that God shows us his glory, that Jesus shows us his glory. And then there are times, too, just like in that experience that the disciples had, they, they, they fell down. Um, they were wiped out from that experience. And they were in awe. They were, they were fear struck. And they fell. And Jesus says, it's me. Get up. Don't be afraid. And we have experiences in our lives that, that are like that, that are fear filled. And we're living in, that, in one of those now. Uh, we don't know what the final outcome will be with all of this, this COVID. Uh, we place our trust in the glorious God that reveals his glory to us in his time. When it's time for us to go to the mountaintop, he's going to reveal that. He'll reveal his plan with that. But for me... And for you and for all of us, uh, we may have been knocked down by this, but Jesus taps us on the shoulder, lifts us up, and says, don't be afraid. It's me. It's I. Get up. Let's go from here. And as challenging as that, that may be for some of us, and uh, there are many challenges that I have with this, um, that voice um, speaks to me every day and it speaks to each of us for those who say yes Lord you are the Messiah you are the son of the living God we proclaim that and then we will see the glory of God the glory of Jesus in our lives amen uh, today um, on, on our special feast 
Uh, we have uh, flowers that have been donated um, by the Dedekians in honor of their uh, parents. Grandparents. Grandparents, okay. Um, also, we have white roses uh, that uh, have been donated by Adrina Tatunja um, in memory of her daughter, uh, Lisa, who passed away last month in Switzerland. Um, and then also uh, flowers, the red flowers, the white flowers, the flowers um, by uh, Judy Brennan, a relative, uh, the niece of Joanne Hartunian, and uh, that is in, in memory of Lynn Hartunian, their daughter. So we have these beautiful flowers that adorn our worship site today.